Hi, welcome back to Django tutorial. In this video, I am going to explain built-in validator and custom validator. Till this point, I have created a form but not validated with the proper input. Now time to validate the form using inbuilt and user defined way. So here I explain the complete process how to validate the form through the coding. So let us start the discussion through coding. First of all, you need to create a project. So type in a terminal Django iPhone admin start project name of the project so here i give the name of project is custom validator once the project is created go inside the folder of the project that is custom validator and then create one application to create the application type a command python manage.py start app and name of the application so just i write the name of application is coder so coder application will create under the project custom validator so django need to install this application under the setting.py file so go under the project folder open the setting.py file and scroll down till the install app and then few inbuilt apps are already there under the install app now we need to add a custom application so name of the custom application is coder so that application i am going to add under the project now django realize that this application is get installed under the project now create a new folder template under the project under the template we can create the application folder that is a coder and under this coder application we can create a different different html pages now here i'll create one of the file that is index.html now the template is also set under the project now we need to register this template under the project so go to the setting.py file again and first of all import the os first i'll import the package os and now register this template to register the template go to the template tab and then go under the directory under the directory list we can type os.path.join and then we can join the directory after the base directory the so name of the directory is a template so in this way we can register the template under the setting.py file after that we need to create a table which consists of certain attribute that will render into the html page or whatever the data user submit on html page to store on the model so go to the application under the application open the model.py file and create the model now i create a class coder model inside that model start model i'll take some attributes under this model so i am right one of the model attribute is named model start data type of that attribute is let's say character field we can set a certain size let's say i want to set 55 size to that attribute that is a name then I'll write the designation of my coder. That is junior, senior, likewise. Again, I'll use a character field. And if I want, I can mention the size of this attribute. That is the max length. So again, I'm looking max length is 55 for this attribute. I'm also looking the department of that coder. So I'm going to create the third attribute, department. And again, I'm going to create the data type of that attribute is character doing max length i'm using same length that is 55 also i'm looking the email of my coders so, let's say modern start i'm using email so i'm using the email field for this model now once this particular model is get created we need to add this model in our database so we need to execute a certain command so again we have to type command python manage.py make migration it will convert our model into the sql query once the model is get converted into sql query then we can migrate this model into the database we need to type a command python manage.py migrate so that all the databases get migrated into the SQL. So this model is successfully added into the project. Now we need to create a form. 
So to create a form, we need to add one of the file under the application. Under coder application, I'm going to add a new file that is forms.py. Now I'll create a form for a user. To create a form, we need to import the package form from Django. We are going to import the form package. Now I'll create the form. So to create a form, you can write a class. Name of your form is let's say coder form. Coder form. Forms dot. And then, what are the attribute you want to list onto the form that you can use over here? Already we created a four attribute under the model, so same attribute I'm going to use for this form. So name is my first attribute that I'm going to use. So name is equal to forms dot character full. We can mention the size of this attribute also here. Yeah. I'll keep it empty. Then I'm going to use the designation. Second attribute on the form. So form star. Let's say it's again character field. Then department. Forms. Dot. Again I'm going to use the same data type. For this department. And I'm going to use one more attribute. That is email. Forms. Dot email field so now these four attributes are created under the forms.py the form is also created under the project now next task is to write the business logic for this application to write a business logic we need to go to the views.py file and now we have to use the functions and method to perform a certain operation first of all under this view.py we need to import my form so from dot forms i'm going to import the form you know that form is coder form this form will get imported now i'll write a function to display the data so coder details is my function name and parameter is request and now i write a certain logic over here for this function so if my request dot method is equal to equal to post we know that there are two methods one is post and other is kit if i posting a certain data through the form then this condition will get true so if my request dot method is equal to equal to post i'll create the object that is fm is equal to what are the data under that coder form it should be pick so request dot what are the data is post request dot post also we are going to check if that object is a valid if it is valid then you can take let's say name is equal to object dot clean data method name clean data and fill name so name so that will be stored under this and then variable similarly for designation i'll use des and i'm going to use let's say fm dot clean data and again the attribute name that is the designation similarly for third attribute is let's say department so dpt is equal to m dot clean data department so that this variable for the department information and last one is email so here i use only em that is email so fm is an object clean data i'm going to access the email in this variable so if i want i can print this information after that if this valid this is going to happen else if this is not so if this is not true means if the request is not post if the request is not post it goes into the else part now under the else part we are going to just simply write fm is equal to order details sorry coder form information has been stored and then finally we are going to return render request and the template name so template name is index so application name is let's say coder and my html page is index 
dot html and what are the data it will return i'll store that data into the dictionary so let it be i'll create a variable form and this object data will be stored into the fm so the business logic is complete once the view dot tui file is complete now i'll write a certain code under the html file so go to the template folder and open that html file so index.html so initially it is empty so i'll add certain html tag inside it so html under the html i'm going to write let's say body tag under the body tag i'm just going to use that form that i want to display form action the form is empty and i'm going to use method is equal to post under the post method inside the form we are going to write the csrf token i already discussed about the csrf token so if you're not aware of it watch my previous video so that you can understand what exactly the csrf token in purpose of this csrf token inside that i want to render the content of form so form dot i want as paragraph then we are going to take certain input also that once the user will submit that data is get posted so input is let's say input type is submit and the value is also submit so we need to close this input this way html form is also get designed now we need to write the urls for application and project now to save the url you need to go to the project folder open the url.py so inside the url.py file first of all we have to include the application url so under the urls you can find the function name include and then we can set the path to the application so i'll add one more path if this path is empty and let it be i'm going to use the include function and order dot urls i am pointing from this project url now this url file is not exist under the application so open the application folder and create that new file that is urls dot py i'll copy the content of main project urls dot py and paste into the application url remove some of the content from that file so this commented part i'll remove first i don't want to be include any application under the applications so i'll remove this include function and i am not looking uh, the admin section from this application as well so i'm going to remove this admin path as well now my task is to add the functionality for the path now under this url.py i need to import the view functions from name of application is let's say coder we need to import the views and you can write the name of view let's say i'm going to use index view and also call the function of the views.py so views dot name of the function so what are the function you write under that views.py we can just access that function that is coder details so if you open that views.py file you can find name of the function is name of the function is coder details so in application urls you can mention the same name of the function if you want you can mention the name of url as well if you want otherwise you can as it is this part so now url has also been set under the application and project url now first of all i'll execute this project to test the functionality whether till this point it execute all the functionality correctly or not and this i on to run a project to run a project we need to type a command python manage.py run servers now we'll get the url copy this url and paste into the browser now we have to hint the index part so i just type the index and now you can find this name designation department email has been displayed properly but still it is not validated by using either custom validation or inbuilt validation so now we'll try both the things now we'll try both the validation through the coding so i'll again back to the coding now i'll make the modification and watch this part carefully that how to perform the validation under the application 
So we already created a forms which consist of these four different parts, name, designation, department, and email. Now we need to import one of the package which handles the validation from Django.core import validators. So this particular package handle all the validators under the Django. Suppose I want to validate name, designation, department, and email. So now I'll use that method of the Django. So under the name attribute, we have mentioned character field, and now we are going to validate the things. So validators is equal to list of validator we can handle here. Validators dot we can mention a different different validation. Suppose I want to mention the max length, mean length, or other parameters also we can handle it using this max length validator here I need to mention the name suppose if I'm using it's a six character I'm going to handle that is the max length is six if the user enter more than six character then it won't be allowed to user enter that input so this part I'm going to just preserve it and this part I'm going to just save it and I'll just again run the project and I'm trying to submit the data with this validation now the project is run successfully go back to the browser and refresh the page and enter the details suppose uh, I am enter some more characters instead of six here I just mentioned the sum here I enter some valid information and I am trying to submit the information it ensure that this value is most six character but it contain 14 character so this validation is automatically checked so I'll go back to my functionality so here we write validators max length validator 6 so user cannot enter more than 6 can if user trying to enter it can get validated through this inbuilt validator or we can say inbuilt package in their validator through that we can handle this validation now second part is custom validation so without using this package or without using this inbuilt method also we can handle this validations now we'll try that custom validation to perform the custom validation so what i'll write i here write a certain method first so let it be here i write the method i want a uh, name start with character g i'll write a method which start the name with the g so particular value i'm going to pass whether that value is start with the G or not as an input and we are going to check if if the value of zeroth character is not equal to G then it will raise the validation so what particular error that we want to raise we can write over here so it will raise the form validation forms validation error validation error and we can mention the particular message the name start with g only so likewise we can mention the error in the function so here i'll leave custom validation so i write a function name start with g so let it be uh, we need to start make a certain modification so i'm not going to use this inbuilt validator so i'll just remove that max length validator complete now validator is equal to inside this list i'm going to write the name of function so my name of function is start with with g the name of the function should start with so now that validators will handle this particular function so just save the code and again go back to the browser now we enter the information let's say i enter google decision making is need let's say department is sort and let's say email is google at the red email it won't read any kind of error because name start with g if i enter any other information let's say Pravin. I'll keep all the information as it is and I'll try to submit it. I'll get an error. Name should start with G only. So likewise, we can handle the custom validation and the 
building a Reddit test using Pichambo. Hope you understand all the content. If you have any doubt, you can write in the comment section. So I'll be more happy to solve your doubt. Thanks for watching this video.